hey what's up guys and welcome back to any making three and today i'm going to be giving you part four of what if naruto was created by mother nature to protect the universe remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also guys don't forget to go ahead and check out the brand new episode brand new series of what if naruto was in the walking dead universe and enjoy that guys and remember if you're new yes i indeed have four channels which i post what if on every single day for you guys enjoy link will be down in the description so go ahead check it out and yeah enjoy and remember if you're new comment down below and tell me so i can welcome you personally so without further ado or wasting more time how about we jump right into this new episode begin now guys So, the last part we left off. Mito Uzumaki had returned recently from her C rank mission, and it had changed her and the group a lot, as they were forced to watch as Hako risked his life to save the person that saved him. It was Abuza, despite everything. It was something that had hit her deeply. As Hako was right, maybe in another life, they could have been friends. But in this life they could not. She had screamed and yelled at Zabuza after watching Gato disrespect his corpse and him not doing anything. However, her words were able to break through to him and cause him to step in and slaughter the goons. However, she was snapped from her trance as many people started to make their way towards the gates. That is when she saw a group of people. The boy, the youngest one with them around her age, glanced up. As their eyes met, she was not sure who he was. However, the next moment he looked away. We skipped back to Naruto as he was happy when his mother said that they would be going back to the village. And now he was seeing it for the first time as he glanced around trying to take in all of the sights. And he had to say, it was looking pretty good as they made their way towards the Hokage's office. Who was glad to see Snedi and he met Naruto for the first time. As Naruto kept on speaking about how old he was, irritating the Hokage but he had to say, he was used to this. After all, he was the one that trained Jiraiya and Snedi himself and Urchimaru as well, but he was a different story entirely. So Naruto asked if he could just go along after, speaking to the Hokage for a time. As he had passed by the ramen place and it smelled amazing and he had a pretty large appetite. When Mitu arrived towards her favorite spot, she saw a newcomer finishing off dozens of bowls. As Naruto introduced himself to her as they started to talk, when he heard her last name, when she heard his as well, she was surprised. She had heard that from Aruka, that the Senjus were a very powerful clan, might even be stronger than the Uchiha's. After all, they had the strongest Hokage that came from that clan, so yes, that was for sure. As Naruto was surprised at her last name, because his mother had told him about her grandmother, and also the woman that was chosen to be the next Jinjuliki. As Naruto realized that, but Mitu had spoken up and said that she was a Jinjuliki. Naruto did not mind. He was actually excited to hear that, wondering how she could control such power, but she couldn't control it such yet. However, they got to talk. As for the first time in her life, she was so close to finding out who her parents were. Hiruzen never wanted to give her the true definition of whatever she asked, but this might be the chance. Eno and her team came by as they were curious about them getting an A-rank mission. Sakura had boasted about it saying that they were the first team to get one. However, Eno was lost in thought as she saw Naruto and how handsome he was, having no idea who he was. 
as he introduced himself to them. Inu and Mito got into an argument as Naruto made his way off when he saw someone around his age moving at high speeds. It turns out that it was Rock Lee as Naruto introduced himself. The both of them got into a little sparring contest. As Snaddy had this sixth sense about Naruto whenever he was fighting, Hiruzen pulled out his crystal ball as both Naruto and Lee started to go at it. Naruto was surprised not expecting someone his age to be as strong as this. However, Lee was completely blown away when Naruto started to put in actual effort. Naruto was far stronger than him and his speed seemed to be faster as well. Naruto gave him a punch that stunned Lee as Naruto knew all about the human body. His mother was Senju Tsunade after all. However, Tintin and Neji arrived thinking that this person was attacking their teammate. So they attacked first and decided to ask questions later. However, the both of them were easily disabled by Naruto. Even Neji who was said to be the prodigy of the clan. Snathi had turned her gaze towards Hiruzen after he had witnessed that. It seems like she was right about Naruto's skills. Even at such a young age he was already a sight to behold. Taking on the prodigy of the Hyuga clan like it was nothing. That was truly an impressive feat for anyone around their age. Naruto met up later with Mito as she asked him where he went. He simply shrugged and said he went, well, somewhere. Met up with someone. That is when they ran into Team 8. As Kiba had saw Silver and believing that Silver should understand who was the Alpha as Naruto had snorted at that. And they got into a little fuss but Naruto did not really bother with that as he turned his gaze towards Mito. He met Shino and Hinata. They seemed like two nice people. So with that they made their way off to find his mother. Snathi was out of the village for a long while so she was not up to date. She did not even know about Mito at all. So she had to get some clarification of what the hell was going on when she met the girl. So with that she told them to stay outside as she made her way to speak to Hiruzen and Saratobi to find out what exactly was going on. So with that we then came out of the elemental nation towards a dimension that was far above it. Naruto was being watched. A strange being with just pure power having no physical form was peering into the universe and watching Naruto. His mother was right. He was meant for greatness. There was a reason why he was, well, born in this world. He was born to save and protect it because a threat, like none other will, come down on the elemental nation for him to stop. And he was the only one that can. Well, with his comrades along. So yeah guys, basically that's what I left off. You guys can switch across the place, check it out for yourself. Don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels, yes. I indeed have 4 of them which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead check them out and yeah enjoy and don't forget to turn on the bell notification and see when I post. So without further ado or waste any more time, how about we jump right into this brand new episode begin now guys. We begin this new episode with Naruto. He sat on the windowsill as he watched his mother instruct the Kunoichis in front of her, Sakura Haruno. Ino Yamanaka, Hinata Hayuga, Ame Uzuki, younger sister of Yujiro Uzuki, who was a chonin, and several others. It has been one and a half months since they returned back to Kanoha, and a lot has happened in that short time. For one, Naruto now had an eternal rival. His name was Rock Lee. Most people might find Lee attitude eccentric and annoying. However, Naruto liked it. He was filled with energy and always ready to throw down at any moment notice. A bright, enthusiasm young man who was filled with nothing but the contribution of hard work as Naruto appreciated that. But that wasn't the only thing to happen. Naruto has gained many more friends in the past month and a half. But one of his closest friends was Mito Uzumaki. A lot has been revealed since Naruto had been back to the village. First, it was her mother, who was none other than Kushina Uzumaki. Snathi had went to speak to Hiruzen about the girl. Hiruzen had told her everything that she had missed out on. 
Hiruzen didn't want to tell Mito about her family status until she had made Chunin. Well, her father's area because the man had a lot of enemies. But things were different now. Despite not being directly related to the Uzumaki family, Tsunavi had taken a vested interest in the girl to make sure that she was safe and she would be prepared for anything. And in order to be prepared and know what she would have to live up to and face in the upcoming future, Snevi believed that it was best to tell her everything. Everything. Hiruzen was afraid to do so as he did not know what would be her reaction. Not to mention numerous times he did not tell her the truth. However, something rather shocking happened. Flashback. As Hiruzen was discussing with Snevi, Mito barged into the office. As they turned towards her, Is my father Minato no Mikaze? she asked, as Naruto was standing right behind her. The both of them were rather shocked. How did she? Snavi didn't notice a look on her son's face, knowing that he had something to do with that. And he did. Naruto was easily able to put it together. Granted, Mito never knew about her mother, but it was pretty easy. If her mother was Kushina Uzumaki who contained the Nine Tails. And everyone in this village believed that before Takagi killed the beast. Which was false because his mother told him a bitch who cannot be killed. From what he was told, the before Takagi was a seal master. So the best thing that he would do was to seal the beast into someone to protect the village. And how would he choose? It couldn't be a coincidence that... It was the night of Mito's birth all of this happened. So he relayed that information to her. And he was right. She put it together rather quickly. A lot was revealed after that. For one week straight, Mito ignored Hirsten as she was angry at him for lying to her. However, they finally got a meeting between them due to Naruto's insistence. And they talk. He apologized, saying that he only wanted to keep her safe. He apologized for everything she's been through. He bowed his head to her in shame and regret. It took a lot but she eventually forgave him. As long as he promised never to lie to her ever again. She was a lot more mature than before. She would never go around spewing the information knowing that it might cost her. As there was many enemies still out there heroes and told her that her father had made over the years. However this was good. Now she knew what she had to look forward to. Now she knew how she had to work hard to get stronger. In the flashback. Since then, his mother had started the program and many Kunoichi that signed up for it. His mother had tested all of them to see. All of them aptitude in learning the art. Sakura had shown great promise because of her low reserves because she had great control. Hinata as well, her being a Hayuka. She had great chakra control. Eno wasn't so far off, but Eno mainly joined it because she wanted to get close to Snade's son, which was Naruto. But she was actually learning a lot. All the Kunoichis were, as Snade intent to push all of them to their limits. However, she was taking great interest in Sakura. The girl was showing great promise for her to teach her more than just medical ninjutsu. Shizune had noticed as well. However, Naruto was bored of this. Glancing through the window, outside was Mito. Her legs were crossed, her eyes were closed. As she was meditating, Mito had a ridiculous amount of chakra. For one thing, she was a Jinjuliki, also a Uzumaki. But the strange part was, she didn't have as much chakra as Naruto. That was just rather shocking because Mito had more chakra than Almost all of the Jonins, it's just that she did not know how to control it. However, Naruto Chakra Pool was almost unlimited. There was a limit, but it was so vast and deep it was shocking. Snavi had noticed that and the control that he possessed. Another reason why he was meant for greatness. His body was growing in new heights and reaching new levels. However, Mito wasn't far behind. If she was able to control that monstrous amount of chakra, she would reach greatness as well. That is why, for the past month and a half, Naruto has been helping her in how to control her chakra. 
It was incredibly hard for her, but there was one thing that he admired about her. Her willingness to never give up. And she's come a long, long way in the past month and a half. They haven't worked on anything else because he told her that. The moment she learned how to control that vast shocker of hers is a moment that they can work on other things. Not to say that he was her sensei now, but he had just taken the role to helping her. He also met Sasuke not too long ago, and Naruto wasn't a fan. Sasuke seemed to have something against him for some reason. Maybe it was because Mito said that Naruto was stronger. He didn't know, as he seemed to be the quick to anger and jealous type. But Naruto was not one to hold grudges for too long, so he did not really pay the Uchiha any mind. So with that, more time passed. However, something phenomenal was coming. That was the Chunin exams of Kanoha. Yes, where all the Jennings could test themselves and show their limits and even surpass them in the upcoming events. This was a phenomenal moment for Kanoha and it was indeed going to be special. Shinobis from all over are making their way towards the village. There was teams coming from Taki. There was teams coming from... Kumo, there was teams coming from the sand, there was teams coming from the rain, from the grass, all over. This was going to be phenomenal. At the moment, Naruto was just returning from a wonderful conversation with his mother and the Hokage. The headband of the hidden leaf was around his neck, resting calmly as he glanced towards the ear in front of him. It wasn't often that they made exceptions but for him they did whenever uh jenin is left alone without a team if he's showing the grace and the amount of power to carry on on his own they are willing to allow him to participate in the exams by himself he would be at a disadvantage because he would be alone but if he had what it takes they would allow him and ruta was just given authorization to do such as he would be participating at first he thought he wouldn't get the chance to take part in the exams but it turns out that he will. His mother had 100% faith in him that he would shock and surprise everyone. Hiruzen also wanted him to participate. The council also had a meeting about this as Naruto was the living heir of the Senju clan. They even start to talk about marriage proposal but Snedi made it clear she was not going to let any of them to force her son into anything that he doesn't want. He's going to live his life as he sees fits. And if any of them has anything to say about it, they're going to have to go through her. She said that with straight confidence that none of them would take the chance. And none of them did. After all, how would they feel if their children were forced to be placed in a program to be married off? So none of them could say anything that would persuade her. And besides, she would support her son whoever he fall in love with. And none of them would choose that for him. As Naruto was making his way down, he came across Team 7. All of them at once. Hey Mito, said Naruto. She turned towards him as Naruto saw the grandson of Hiros and Sir Tobi, who he had met not too long ago. He was standing close to Mito, glaring at someone. As Naruto noticed a figure in a dark suit with makeup on his face. What's going on? Sasuke was standing on top of the fence as he spoke. Nothing for you to worry yourself or get involved in. As Naruto didn't know what the guy deal was, Sakura seemed worried. As the guy in front of them seemed rather angry as he reached for something on his back. The girl glanced towards Naruto. Tamari was surprised. She's already seen one cute guy already. And that was Sasuke and this guy was just handsome as well. Is Kanoha really full of handsome guys she thought to herself. Naruto glanced up. Sasuke thought he was looking at him but no he was not. They follow his gaze. Immediately. Konkuro stepped back. As Gara sunshine down towards the group. Konkuro. What are you doing? He said. Oh, it's nothing. It doesn't look like nothing, said Gara. Don't you dare bring disgrace to our village, or else I'll kill you. Now, now, said Naruto as he stepped forward. Is that any way to speak to 
your own village comrade. Gara turned as Naruto was rather close to him. Temari was worried. The last person to nonchalant walk up to Gara like that got crushed by his hand and it wasn't a pretty sight. Who are you? Gara said. I am Naruto Senju. How about you? Who are you? said Naruto with a smile. His eyes closed as he was smiling. Senju? Both Temari and Konkuru thoughts. Gara. Gara of the desert, he said. Will you be in the upcoming exams? Yep, said Naruto. As Gara gave a nod. As he walked off with his teammates. The girl and the boy looking at him. Naruto, you're going to be in the exams? Mito asked in joy. Yep, just spoke to the Hokage. Sakura looked at him. Naruto was a pretty nice guy, but she did not see it. Ino said that he was more handsome than Sasuke. Yes, he had really pretty eyes. Not to mention he was so nice. And his face did look... No! What am I saying, Sakura thought. Sasuke is the most handsome guy ever, she told herself. As she asked Naruto where was his team. I don't really have any. Sasuke jumped down, giving him a suspicious glare. And how exactly will you participate if you don't have any team, he asked. As Naruto brought a finger up to his lip. It's a surprise, he said. See you guys later. Before they could question him, he flashed away. Leaving flowers in his wake. How does he do that, Sakura said. This wasn't a normal sunshine, as she saw, almost like a bouquet of flowers on the ground. As it then spiraled off into the wind. They were beautiful. He's full of all sorts of talents, Mito said, smiling. Sasuke glanced over towards her as he frowned. As he then stomped his way off. Time skip. As Naruto stood at the Senju compound, his mother was in front of him. As she was patting down his hair. You know I'm not a kid anymore, right? said Naruto. Yes, I know, she said. But I still have to check. Why? Naruto said. Because I wanted, she said. Naruto sighed. There was no arguing with her when she was like this. Good luck, Naruto, Shizune said. A big smile on her face. Don't worry, big sis. I'll ace this. I had silver bark beside Naruto. Of course, Naruto was taking him with him. He was his companion. Now be safe out there. And show them hell, said Snaddy. As Naruto gave her a big smile. Don't worry, mom. I'll dominate the exam. See you guys soon, he said as he made his way off. Snethi was not worried in the slightest as her hand went up towards her neck. She realized that she had gave her necklace to him some time ago. It was his lucky charm. He was able to finally break the curse that she thought was on the necklace. As she smiled happily. Come on, Shizune, she said. As they proceed to make their way. As they walk. They passed by a few ninjas. As Shizune had a little blush in her face, Snethi started to chuckle. What's so funny? You think you're hiding well, but you're not hiding as much as you think. W what are you talking about? Shizune said, her blush deepening. I know there's something going on between you and Genma. Shizune's face turned beet red. Naruto saw the both of you, said Snaddy. As Shizune proceeded to run away, Snaddy burst out laughing. However, she was happy for her little apprentice. She was soon going to have a talk with that Genma fellow. To make him new, if he hurt her or broke her heart, she was going to break him. All she wanted was for her to be happy after all. Meanwhile, as Naruto arrived to see Team 7, well, seems you guys are here already. As Mito made her way over towards him as he started to talk. As Sakura spoke up. I wonder if he's going to be okay by himself. She heard about how dangerous the exams were. And Naruto was going to be taking them by himself. Sasuke just grunted as he did not respond. In a way that would make Sakura say anything else. So with that they proceed forward. As they made their way inside. However... Naruto saw a bunch of people gathered. As he spoke up, some sort of illusion, he said. 
confusing them as they wonder what he was talking about when they realize as Sasuke was the first to pick up on it. However, Sasuke did something rather stupid as he walked straight up and told the guy to drop the illusion, making people question what was going on. As Naruto blinked, did he not see that it was a way to weed out the weak competitors? Maybe the Uchiha was not as smart as he naturally thought. Yeah, maybe he wasn't that smart. That is when Naruto saw a green clad hit the ground. He blinked in confusion. Huh, Lee? Lee snapped his gaze up. My eternal rival, he said as he jumped to his feet, barging over towards Naruto. What are you doing here, said Naruto, as he doubted that Lee's team would fall for this tactic. Oh, my team has decided that we will not show our true strength, so he was punched in the arm by Tintin. We did so in secret, you idiots. That doesn't mean you can tell everyone. But Tintin, Naruto is my eternal rival and great friend. He will not do anything to harm our teamwork, he said. Yeah, he's right. Besides, Lee's my friend, said Naruto as he pat him on the shoulder. You see? Lee told Tintin. As Naruto saw Neji. Hey there, Neji. Nice to see you as always. The Hayuga huff as he turned his gaze. As Naruto found it hilarious. He was not sure what was up with some of the guys. In Kanoha, especially ones around their age. It's like they have some kind of stick in their ass or something. That being Neji and Sasuke. It did not take too long for them to proceed forward. Kakashi came towards his team to speak to them. Wish them luck as Naruto made his way inside. As they did, Naruto looked around. Silver was with him the entire time. As they walk, Silver started to feel the intentions of the people. As he started to growl. Before he barked, causing everyone gaze to turn towards them. All of them tried to intimidate Naruto but... He merely scoffed, finding it rather pathetic to be exact. Whenever his mother was training him, she was far more scary than these guys, so what they were doing was pure nonsense. It did not take too long for the rest of the teams to arrive. Inu arrived as she rushed over towards him. Naruto didn't mind talking with her, but sometimes she got a bit much, as he could barely get a word in. However, she was a nice girl. The men then finally arrived as they were all brought to their seats. Naruto blinked in confusion as he got the paper. He knew absolutely nothing on this. Don't get him wrong, Naruto wasn't a stupid guy or anything, but these questions were extremely difficult. However, it was easy to see what was going on. They were to cheat. As Naruto saw several people already finish, which should be impossible unless they had the right answers. As he saw the others quickly using their technique, he noticed there was an eyeball made from literal sand. It was from the guy from the desert. How did the Proctor man not see that? As Naruto saw a guy next to him with a paper already completed, Naruto glanced towards a window nearby. As he smirked when he saw the tree, as he reached out and felt the movements. Suddenly, the branch crashed right through the window, breaking it. As Naruto then released a gust of wind, he got up quickly and caught the paper and placed it down on his desk, causing the guy to catch the other paper. Ibiki and the other Chunins quickly got to work in fixing everything. As Naruto erased the name that was on the top, and wrote his name instead. Stage 1 complete, he thought to himself, with a smile. After that, Ibiki gave them a tough choice. Naruto looked as he saw many people giving up. That was until Mito slammed her hand on the table. She refused to give up as she made sure to tell him that. Her overall demeanor was able to break a lot of people out of the fear trance. And it was a good thing. So many more could compete and continue forward. Someone came and jumped through the window. As it was a Konoichi. She introduced herself as Anko Midarashi. 
and she told them that it was time for them to face hell. What was she talking about? Time skip. The forest of death it was called. So this is hell, huh? Naruto thought to himself. As uncle was really trying to make this place look scary as hell. He was given a stroll, a heaven stroll. And he was also sent her to a gate. A lot of members had fallen out so they each got their own path. Some of them doubling up. They were told to enter when it went off and it did. Naruto wasted no time as he leaped into the forest. A good 15 minutes later Naruto was walking through the forest as calmly as ever when he got surrounded by a team from Taki. Two girls and one guy. All of them holding out their weapons. It looks like we struck luck. The first girl said that she seemed to be the leader. To come across the only person without a team. Tell you what, hand over your scroll and we won't mess up that pretty face of yours. You think I'm pretty, said Naruto with a smile. Well, you are cute, she said. How about we go to a date after this? Huh, I'm flattered, said Naruto, but I think you're a bit preoccupied. What do you... She looked behind her to see both of her teammates restrained by plants. It covered their mouths and their arms. When she turned back around, Naruto was in front of her. As his two fingertips were glowing green as he poked it in her forehead. As he forcefully shut her mind down, she collapsed like a sack of potatoes. He searched her and found the scroll that he needed. Hell yeah, he said as he jumped in the ear. First shot. Naruto picked up their body and laid them in the grass. They didn't seem like they had any intent to kill him because he would have felt it. He covered them with the grass to keep them protected so that animals would not devour them. After all, they wanted the scroll but they did not want to hurt him. And he didn't want to leave them for dead. He wasn't a bad guy. However, Naruto then felt a tainted sensation. It felt like death. This disfigured, wicked, unholy amount of bloodlust. Who the hell is giving off that? Naruto thought to himself. Not even the red head was feeling that ominous and Naruto could tell that the redhead was something special. What the hell was it? Taken to the trees, as curious as he was, he decided to go and investigate. That is when he felt another source. This one was also vastly powerful and corrupting as well. It felt like pure hatred. When Naruto arrived, he saw none other than Mito being slammed into a tree. Someone rushed towards her as a person hand was outstretched to slam in her stomach. Naruto was shocked when he saw the facial features. His mother had told him about that guy and there was no doubt in his mind on who that was. He saw Sasuke on the ground. Sasuke was in agony holding his neck. Sakura was leaning against a tree trembling in fear. Naruto bent his knees and leaped. Meanwhile, Orochimaru was about to seal off the excess chakra from the Nine Tails. Before he could make the contact though, he felt something as he turned. He brought his arm up to block the hit that would no doubt be weakened. After all, these were just BAM! Bones broke instantly. The sawning was sent sailing as he crashed through several trees, slamming on the ground hard. His right arm was broken in several spots. Orochimaru picked himself in utter shock. Can't believe that he was hit with such a force. In the split moment, Mito had been able to calm down as Naruto landed. Naruto, she said. Take your team and run, said Naruto. I'll stop him. As Mito looked towards Naruto. He's no ordinary ninja, I know. He's Orochimaru, the Sanin. Do as I say, said Naruto. Silver barked as Naruto turned towards him. Help them out, okay, buddy, said Naruto as he patted him on the head. Silver barked as Naruto had kept him in the shadows. Whenever Silver had smell or know that someone was coming by his hearing, he made a sound and Naruto was easily able to pick up on them. That is why he wasn't surprised when the Taki team 
had landed around him. As Naruto could pick up on Silver, small whining, his ears were in tune to the sound. He's been training them over the past years to pick up on certain gestures from the hybrid. Silver picked up Sasuke as he was placed on his back. Mito was worried but Naruto told her to go. As they got out of there, Orochimaru arrived. He would like to see who had hit him that hard as he looked at the boy. Who are you? So you're him, huh? said Naruto. The one that was on the team with my mom and betray everyone. Orochimaru raised the eyebrow. Ah, I see. No wonder you hit that hard. Seems your mother taught you well. Yes, she did, said Naruto. What are you doing here, Sanin? Last time I checked, your title is a bit overkill for this. Well, I had a job to do here. A job that was finished until you showed up. I'm curious. Are you friends with the Jinjuliki? Yes, I am. Even though the Uchi is a jackass. I'm not sure what you did to him, but I won't let you kill them. Aruchimar chuckled. And tell me, even if I were going to kill them, do you really believe a child like you can stop me? Why don't you try me, said Naruto. Hmm. I'm sure that your mother trained you. However, I'm sure that you realize you cannot win against her. So that means, compared to me, you are nothing. Well, I'm pretty strong for my age. Cocky, aren't you? It seems it's time that someone humble you, Urchmar said. As Naruto motioned for him to come, the Sanin vanished. As Naruto looked around, before he closed his eyes and duck, Orochimaru hand passed over his head. Orochimaru raised the eyebrow in surprise. As Naruto brought his leg up to kick him on the shin, the Sanin jumped and lashed out with a kick that Naruto could not possibly dodge. However, to his surprise, Naruto already leaned back and grabbed the leg and yanked it downwards. Orochimaru was pulled downwards as Naruto fist cracked into his nose. However, the Sanin turned into mud. Several shurikens were coming from behind as Naruto flipped over them and landed upside down on the tree. He then slammed his foot into it causing it to break as he kicked it toward the Sanin. Orochimaru leaped over it only to see Naruto in mid ear his leg hanging straight up in the air as he came down. Boom! The whole section of the forest erupted in a violent explosion. The ground uprooted, vines, everything blasting all around. The Sanin was resting in a tree. He was shot by the monstrous strength. However, he shouldn't be. He was the son of Snelly after all. It seems. He's got a knack for her super strength. He seemed to even be stronger than her when he was her age. It was remarkable. Incredible. The tree suddenly exploded. As Urchimaru was met in mid-ear with Naruto, attacks were thrown, legs were thrown, arms were thrown. The both of them separated as a ground cracked when the Sanin was viciously slammed into the ground. Once again Urchimaru seemed surprised and also amused as Naruto's feet stepped where his head once was. Naruto was backhanded but he flipped right on the tree. Urchimaru saw something interesting. As Naruto launched himself towards him, throwing punches after punches, the Sanin evade all of them before he knocked Naruto's leg from underneath him. Before Naruto could hit the ground though, he was back on his feet. The Sanin forced himself to dodge each of the blows. Orochimaru separated from him. Interesting, he said. It's almost like the forest is helping you fight me. As Naruto jumped forward, Urchimaru leaped forward as well, only for vines to grab his legs and arms. The Sanin was surprised. As Naruto's fist was glowing golden, he sank it into Urchimaru's face. It's been a long time since the Sanin felt such pain, and not to mention this was from a child. Blood spurted out of his nose and mouth as he was sent yanking back towards Naruto though by the vines. 
Aruchamar spit out three snakes as they tore the vines off his arms and legs. He then spun and used the third vine to pull himself down, sending a brutal kick into Naruto's stomach. He then grabbed Naruto by the leg and spun him around. However, a vine reached out and pulled Naruto up, forced him to release him as Naruto kicked his arm. Orochimaru was truly intrigued by what was going on. Of course he heard the rumors but this was not what he was expecting when he heard that he possessed the Mokidon. It was like the forest was alive and trying to aid him. Orochimaru was done playing around though, lashing out his hand hidden shadow snake. However, thousands of vines came together and slammed right into them strangling each of the snakes. Orochimaru flashed through one handed seals. Great wing breakthrough, he said. The attack slammed into the incoming Naruto and sent him crashing on the forest floor. The Sani then came down and drive his fist into Naruto's guts. Naruto coughed up blood. However, he grabbed Orochimaru's arm. Orochimaru was surprised that he was still conscious after that. Naruto was grinning. As his smile confused the Sani, judging after what he just did. You made a mistake. Fighting me in a forest, said Naruto. You're not going to leave here alive. Orochimaru heard sounds all around him as Naruto's eyes start to glow golden. A golden aura surrounded the boy's body. Orochimaru blinked. Was this Sage Mode? The bones in his hand crack as Naruto applied pressure. Thousands of trees and vines start to attack the Sanin as he jumped away. The forest was a literal death trap. He tried his best to evade all of them but he did not come out unscathed. His right arm was gone. His left leg was punctured three times and there was a nasty gash that tore his shirt rather badly. The Sani was baffled as this was a real Orochimaru, not a mud clone. Yes, he had been holding back not to exert his full power but for him to be done like this. The forest then seemed to attack once more. It went crazy. Orochimaru glanced up as Naruto was in mid-air. Like a golden ball of sun. Wood style said Naruto as he slammed both of his hands together. Deep forest emerging. The groan exploded as violent eruption of wood erupted. It tried to trample the Sanin and crush him under its might. Orochimaru spat the Kuznagi as he sliced and tore. The blade extended as he gouged out a large portion as he jumped up in the air. As Naruto was above him, both of his fists was covered in the golden aura. Raining fists, he yelled. As Naruto fired his hand down at blinding speed, the aura seemed to fire from his hand itself. One indentation in the ground. When it met, the ground exploded as Naruto kept on raining them down. The Sanin was hit by two of them. Orochimaru was forced to go on their ground, but Naruto did not stop as the ground exploded, throwing the Sanin out. Naruto pushed himself deeper as the golden aura started to flare. It started to get brighter and brighter. All of it rushed towards his fists. The veins in his hand started to pulsate. You could see inside of his hand by the golden lights. Naruto landed. The ground underneath him seemed to break him down from the force that was in his fists. He ran towards the Sanin with all of his might, intending on stopping him right here and right now. All the forest worked against Urchimaru in that moment. The forest came alive and blocked every exit, shocking the Sanin. Urchimaru had no choice. As he had to do this, he brought his hand down after biting his finger, flashing through one-handed seal. Summoning, Rashomen, he said. A massive gate came in front of Naruto. He threw his fist forward and boom. The gate exploded outwards. However, it gave Urchimaru the time that he needed to slice through the forest with his Kuznagi blade. As he fled, using the Kuznagi to get away from all, the forest that was trying to kill him. The gate slowly crumbled down as he started to vanish away. As Naruto had blown right through it. Naruto was panting as he dropped down to his knees. He couldn't believe it. After all of that and the Sanin still 
managed to get away. He collapsed on his back. That is when the forest came to his aid. The trees and the vines wrapped around him. As they started to replenish his stamina, the energy coursing through him, Naruto pulled himself up, no longer feeling exhausted. Orochimaru had made his way off as he was able to get away. The Saanin regrew his arm. He was shocked. Yes, he was not going all out, but he still had to actively try to survive. The boy could literally control the entire forest and not to mention that wood style technique. That was done by Hoshirama Senju himself. The scale was not as powerful as what the man had did but still. How could one child possess such power? This was far beyond what he had expected. He wasn't trying to kill the child because he wanted to see. What would a child of a son be capable of? Snavi was going to show him that. Her son that is. And he was not. He was not disappointed. For such a young age a child was that powerful it was truly remarkable and incredible. Orochimaru started to worry about the future, implications of what this meant. This boy could be a true, a true threat in the future. Yes, he would be. It seems like he was gonna have to take care of him the next time he saw him. He couldn't allow someone like that, someone that vast the powerful to survive. It would be catastrophic for anyone that would oppose Konoha in the future. A distance away outside the elemental nation, the same being from before was watching Naruto and it seemed pleased. Its language was unable to be heard by humans. Its power was above them after all. However, it spoke to itself mostly. And it said something rather shocking. The estimate of what Naruto was tapping into was just 3% of what his body could truly handle. Yes, all of that power that he had just displayed was just 3%. He's reached nowhere near his peak. This boy was meant to protect the universe from the vast threats, especially one that was coming very soon. His power needed to be absolute. And he was nowhere even close to reaching his peak or nowhere close into reaching his full power yet. However, the more he fought the more he dived deeper into nature and the forces. Nature was just one of them. There was many other forces that he had yet to fully reach, to fully tap into. It was only a matter of time before he started to harness those power and then his might would be known throughout the entire universe. He would be truly unstoppable. To squash all threats. To squash all wrongdoings in the universe. And to protect all the goodness that the entity was trying to protect but could not. That is why. They leave it towards a being of their creation. Yes, and that was Naruto. Time skip. Soccer. And Mito was left. Silver was there as well. However, Sasuke was still unconscious and Naruto was nowhere to be seen. That is when they decide to make their move. A team from the land of sound. However, Mito had not hesitated to try and take them down. But when she went up against those who something happened. She got dizzy as she collapsed forward. Mito saw her scream. Mito was off balance and she was dizzy. Barely standing on her feet. Those who smirk. Rather stupid of you to run in on someone that. You have no earthly idea about their abilities. We're not here for you. We're here for the Uchiha. But if you get in your way. Zaku will finish for him. Will kill you all as he plays his hand towards Sakura. Sakura leap as he decimate the ear in front of her. He smirked to himself until. Something slammed into his back. Everyone was shocked. Silver was coated in pure lightning as he crashed into Zaku. Zaku screamed as he was sent spiraling. He broke through eight heavy trees. They slammed down on top of him, leaving him a broken mess. Silver landed his claws, tearing into the earth.
even bark. Those who was forced to leap as an electrified bark ripped through the entire place, scorching trees and burning the earth. Those who landed in shock as the dog was coated in lightning. Silver then moved, tearing the earth as he did. His speed was immense as he stopped in mid-air and actually turned himself. He started to move around, leaving a shock after a week. Those who could not believe it, neither could Sakura. She was in shock. She never knew the dog had abilities. Silver crashed down, forcing those who jump away. Kin was safely in the trees. When those who suddenly stopped, his back was turned. However, that was a mistake. Those who turned as a fist planted into his gut. She then uppercut him in the ear. Mito had healed up. Unlike normal people, her healing ability was far stronger and a little bit of dizziness had been quickly destroyed out of her system. She did not stop there though as she drive her fist right into his chest. Silver then slammed into Dosu back, crushing him face first. However, several needles landed around the both of them. It started to affect both Silver and Mito. When a kunai landed in a tree, Kin eyes widened as boom. She tried to jump but she was blasted by the force. She crashed down hard on the ground. She tried to get up but a kunai strike her right in the temple. The back of the kunai that is. It knocked her out. As Sakura stood there, her arm extended. She looked towards the two as a strange bell Genjutsu had stopped in his tracks. Are you guys okay? Silver body had returned back to normal his fur. Returning back to normal fur. As they just taken down the entire team. Someone jumped out of the foliage. As Mito raised her fist until. Naruto? She said. Oh there you guys are. Said Naruto. Are you guys okay? He asked. Silver barked. As Naruto looked around. Mito walked up towards him. You're right. She said. A look of relief and joy. That guy was no joke. Don't worry, said Naruto. I was able to scare him off. It was Urchimaru, said Sakura, of the Sanin. He should not be here. I know, said Naruto. As he pulled out something and tossed it to her, and gave one to Mito. Where did you... That's why it took so long. I ran into two teams coming here. I'm not sure which scroll you guys have, but... Either way, he said. You defeated two teams by yourself? Sakura asks. Well, they weren't that strong, said Naruto. Sakura was shocked. How strong was he? A malicious feeling started to fill the ear. When they turn, it doesn't matter how strong he is. He's nothing compared to a Uchiha. S Sasuke? Sakura was shocked. Looking at this Sasuke, a malicious feeling. It did not feel pleasant. Finally, let's test which one of us is the strongest. Senju. Sasuke shot forward only for a chain to slam. Right in front of him. Mito stood there, her arm extended. The technique of the Uzumakis. Now she knew why Kakashi had been able to help her with this technique. Even though he did not possess it. It's because he knew her parents. As he explained to her that he could not tell her. Mito wasn't so good with the chains though. That is why she rarely used them in battle. You see the chains are all about control. The more control you have over your chakra the more chains you can make. And Mito who had. Small amount of control did not use them as much because. They were fragile. If she didn't concentrate or have good control. That is why Sasuke was easily able to break through it. Damn it she cursed. As Sasuke rushed straight towards Naruto, his arm extended to sock Naruto in the face. Naruto ducked under the blow and lifted Sasuke up by his chin as he pushed him away. The Uchiha did not let that stand though as he jumped back and breathed. A massive fireball to Naruto. Sasuke stop this! Both Sakura and Mito yell as Naruto was already in mid-ear. He lashed his hand out towards Uchiha. Several vines slammed him into the back. And crashed him into the ground. 
Sasuke flared the strange, almost demonic chakra once again. As he burst out of them, he shot towards Naruto Kona in hand. Naruto ducked and grabbed his wrist and flipped him over, slamming Sasuke into the earth. Sasuke spat up blood as he tried to get up. Naruto yanked his hand and slammed a knee into his gut. He then chopped him in the back of the neck. As Sasuke collapsed, Naruto caught him. Naruto then noticed a mark on his neck as he saw the fluctuation and the chakra, fueling back into it. So this is what he wanted, Naruto thought to himself. He turned towards the other two. It's time that we get moving, he said. I already have my scroll, so let's get out of here, shall we? Time skip. The Hokage could not interfere while the exams was going on, so he could not be here. Naruto was sure that his mother was there, so he told the next best person, and that was the teacher of the academy, Aruka. What to tell them? Sasuke had woken up, and he seemed fine, and he had no recollection of ever attacking Naruto or going on a rampage. However, they were at the forest. They had to wait because they were rather early. Naruto was surprised that someone bested them here. It was a group from the sand. That redhead was absolutely no joke. The forest was searched, discreetly. However, the sawning was nowhere to be seen. Snade was fuming. How dear. That son of a bitch went after her son. If she see him, she would tear his head from his body. She was pissed off. At least Naruto was okay. But once she found him, she's going to kill Orochimaru for even making an attempt to go after her son. Just like that, the days went by. As Snade had to be assured that Naruto was okay. Otherwise, she would have disregarded all the rules and rushed in there to make sure that he was safe. But knowing that the Sanin was here, it didn't spell good for anyone at all. He was up to something. Orochimaru had fled, so he did not speak to anyone regarding what had happened. However, Naruto did send back word that he did place a mark on Sasuke. That left all of them curious to find out what it was. However, after the proctor had checked up on the Uchiha, who said that he was fine to go on. Besides, if Sasuke were to be taken out of the exams, he wouldn't be able to participate. And he told them that he was fine over and over again because he wanted to participate. He didn't want to wait until next year again to take the exams. However, for the time being they allowed him. Many people were also coming here to see the last Uchiha fight. So pulling him out right now would be a mistake. However, they just have to make sure that they test him before anything else. The remainder of the days went by rather quickly. Hiruzen finally arrived there as Naruto saw his mother. But they were already lined up. Hiruzen and the others were standing up there as he started to speak about the exams. Majority of the Kanoha teams had made it. However, one of the teams from Taki also made it as well. Someone on the team, as Naruto looked out for that individual. It was a girl that he had noticed. She was extremely friendly. She had mint green hair and orange eyes. With a big smile on her face, she seemed to be excited just to be here. He didn't know her name. However, he didn't know what was up with her two teammates. He met them in the forest when he was returning back. Flashback. As Naruto had just dealt with the two teams. Another team blocked his path. What do we have here? One of the boys said. Take him down, he said to the girl. Not even bothering to use her name. She folded her arms. As she did not pay him any mind. Hello there, she said. Who are you? Naruto looked at her. I'm Naruto. Who are you? He said. Don't tell him who you are. We are not friends. We are enemies. Take him down now. You're not the boss of me, she said. As she started to walk away. Nice to meet you, she said, Naruto. As she walked off. The two guys looked towards Naruto. Naruto cracked his knuckles. Do you really want to do this, he asked. The both of them ran off as well. Huh, 
cowards as Naruto made his way. In the flashback, she seemed pretty nice but her teammates seemed to be two assholes. As she saw Naruto looking her way, as she waved towards him, Mito and Ino blink because the both of them were looking at Naruto. As he waved back, as their gaze turned towards the girl, she smiled at the both of them. She seemed extremely happy just to be here. However, the proctor told them that they had to go through a preliminary matches as many of them groaned thinking that they would be able to rest because several of them came in late. It was asked if any of them would like to give up. A boy from Kanoha gave up. He had on glasses as he made his way off. Alright, let the preliminaries begin, Haiti said. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notification they posted. Remember to share with all of your friends in social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels. Yes, I need a fourth them which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. So without further ado, let's get the hell out of here. See you guys soon. Peace guys.